We've got some serious things to talk about this episode. We also have a pretty serious match coming up in the first leg against Man City in the knockout stage of the Champions League. So let's get into it. Hey guys, RC here, back with episode 13, Club 4 of our Journeyman Save. And a lot going on, a lot to catch you up on. We've got the transfer window that we've been through. We need to catch you up to date on recent uh, fixtures and results. And we've got to talk about the save itself and a possible move. So let's go ahead. First of all, we're going to jump into the highlights of the match we just finished against Valencia. Illa Marindi was back in the side for this one. Uh, we are still working on getting him up to fitness. It was Valencia making the first shot of the game, and it was a blast from Villena at the edge of the box. We found ourselves in a 1-0 hole. In the 72nd minute, it was a through ball to Ibanez, bounced off the woodwork and just kind of sat there, and Ibanez beat everybody to it to put it back in. Got a lucky equalizer there. Uh, they did outshoot us slightly, had more possession than we did, which is, you know, okay, I suppose. Taking a look at the schedule going back to last episode against Rangers. We beat Real Hispalis 4-2, and you can look at the goal scores there. Uh, if you didn't see last episode, please go check it, check it out. Rafael Garcia, the double hat trick. It was amazing. And we were losing that game <laughs> pretty badly. Uh, then we lost to Real Madrid, ending our winning streak, but at least it was in the Super Cup. <clears throat> we beat Malaga 5-0, Ibanez with a brace. Valencano stunned us. We, um, we played our first team here with one exception. We brought in Daniel Gianelli, who was our uh, backup keeper. Actually, he was our third choice keeper, but we'll talk about why he was our uh, reserve keeper here. Uh, and we just couldn't get it done. Uh, they scored two goals. They were basically both route one balls that beat uh, Kovac uh, over the top. So. Uh, that happened. 4-1 uh, over Atletico Bilbao, a hat trick from Ibanez. A 4-3 win over Laganas, And that was pretty good, being that Ibanez was sent off with a straight red in the 22nd minute. And it was brutal. I think he caught the guy uh, right about hip level, uh, upended him, uh, double-footed lunge. It was insanity. I'm surprised... <coughs> that he did not get any additional games. Uh, we came back and beat Vigo 2-1, and Alex uh, Luvavadio got a brace, and his first, uh, well, he got his first goal against uh, Bilbao, and then uh, got the game winners against Vigo. Gijon, we won 4-1. Luvavadio scored again in this one, and Valencia, a 1-1 draw. Ibanez needed a late goal in the second half, uh, to give us uh, the lead in that, or to give us the draw in that one. Uh, we were down 1-0. Uh, so we're playing Man City today, but we also went through our transfer window. So let's catch you up to date there. We'll start with the outgoing. Uh, we moved on Carmelo Ubida uh, for 160000 uh, He was a young Spanish player, but you can see not much in the way of potential. Then we moved off Carmelo in Indelecio, uh, three and a half star. He's better, but again, just so much depth on that right side. I felt he was expendable. We got 200,000 for him. Uh, then the big bucks started coming in. Thomas Fazekas uh, didn't really want to trade him or sell him, trade. That's an American thing is trading players, not selling. Uh, and I just slip into that out of habit sometimes. I mean, it's 54 years in the making here guys. Uh, but uh, three-star potential. Um, he had played mostly as a defensive mid when we went to the 4-3-3 with one striker and a, and a holding mid. Um, 
I, I liked him as a player. I thought he could be a good center back as well. Just not a lot of upside. And we got a good offer, and I said, you know what? We can't pass that. The reason we couldn't pass it is I had signed another player, and I needed the money. So I was kind of caught between a rock and a hard place, and he was the first uh, bailout that came calling. We talked him up from about $6 million, so we more than doubled our money on him. And we paid, you know, we only paid, we paid 3.4, so we made a nice profit on him. Uh, Alfonso Guerrero goes off for two and a half million. Uh, again, another uh, relatively young player, 23 years old, only three star potential, just not a lot of upside. Carlos Pryor went to Blackburn on a free. He was our third choice goalkeeper and his contract was up into the year and he was more of a salary dump. I was trying to get his salary off the books. Stefan Pernan, we loaned him out to Red Star. Uh, they're paying about 40% of his salary. Now, he was our backup keeper, so we knew we were going to be a little short there, uh, but we had we had the guy that we just looked at uh, that gave up the two goals in that cup match, uh, and I thought we'd be okay. Uh, and, you know, so that's why we let Pernan go out, help him develop. The thought was he would be our starter next year. Uh, Patrick Nandrick Nass. He goes off to China for $24 million. Uh, we bought him for eight and a quarter. He's been a really, really good player. I really liked him. But we've just had some, some players coming in on that side. Ibanez is over there. Who's the other guy? Garcia is over there. And so, yeah, I just, you know... I said, we can we can let him go, and that's a big chunk of change. And Hector Vasquez goes off for 850000 uh, He was, again, another young 23-year-old, three-star max. Just didn't have a lot of room for him. Uh, coming in, so you've seen his name on the score sheet, Alex Luvavadio. Uh, he cost us six and a quarter up front. He'll cost us $8 million over the life of the loan. Damn, does he look good. 13 caps for the Congo. Uh, he is only 19 years old, valued at $18.5 million, five-star potential, three-and-a-half-star current. And even though he can be depth up top, which he has played there a couple of times, I like him out on the wing because he has decent crossing. That is improving, so I expect that to get better and at least get up to a 10. Uh, and take a look at what he's done. Six league matches. Uh, four goals, five assists, and a seven and a half rating. Dude is astounding, and he is a bona fide grade A wonder kid. So was very happy to get him. We brought in Alexis Navarro for two hundred and thirty thousand. Uh, he is again a right winger and striker depth. Only two and a half star, but he wasn't very expensive. Uh, cost us two hundred and thirty thousand. He's already valued at five hundred and twenty-five thousand, and I think he can just do the job for us. You know, if there's a, if there's a need. Now we thought we were going to be losing our right back Garai, and we were up against the transfer deadline pretty much. So we get, we saw this guy Gerard Shepherds, and we went ahead and bought him for five and a half, going up to six and a half, and you can see he is. A right back, he can play center back. He's 6'5". I'd like to see his heading get a little bit better. Jumping reach is really there. So I'm going to try to get his heading trained up. Four-star potential. It was five when I, when I made the offer on him. It wasn't until he came in. Uh, he came up through the Lommel uh, system in Belgium. So we've picked him up. Uh, only one goal this year, but he's been playing well. And only one appearance for us. Um, but he could be our right back of the future, at least for right now. Then we looked at uh, another center back, uh, Aldevan Azevedo. He cost us $3.3 million. He's 22 years old from Brazil. This guy was a four and a half star when I made the offer. Comes into the club, and since then, he was a three star, now down to two and a half. But you can see his ratings are very, very solid. I think there's a lot there. He did get upset that he wasn't registered for Champions League, and there was nothing in there to go, uh, hey, dude, we were Champions League from last season. We've already been through the group stage. Doesn't mean that you're going to get automatically put into the side for the knockouts. 
get over yourself. <laughs> he is Brazilian. I understand there's a little ego involved. So uh, Odin's Bold Club bought him for 3.7. We get him a little on the cheap side. He hasn't played badly for him, just not a lot of goals or assists. Don't expect that from a center back. Uh, so again, I picked him up for depth and thought he would be, you know, some quality. At the transfer deadline, we knew we had loaned out, we had sold prior on a free. Perrin went off on a loan. We had our reserve keeper then give up two goals in the stun in the upset loss in the cup. And this guy popped up on my scouting report. Kevin Gonzalez from River Plate. He's been on loan for Houston. He uh, allowed 31 in 31, uh, nine shutouts with a 706. He's valued at five and a quarter million. He's a 19 year old Argentinian with five under 20 caps, five star potential, two and a half star current. He is really, really good. And the reason I signed him is we are going to lose Francisco at the end of the year. But if we compare him out against Francisco, he's almost as good already. And he's five years younger. So I said, wow. And then if we compare him against Pernan, he's much better than Pernan in most of the categories. And I've always been concerned about Pernan's eccentricity. So this guy, I was like, yes, I will have some of that. We signed him for $9.75 million. Taking a look at the finances, we are sitting on $44 million. We have $8.5 million left in the transfer budget, about $300,000, 250000 in payroll that we can move if we needed to. We did lose two point one this month, but we've made $29 million this season, and that was because of the big spins that we had here at the deadline. So if we jump into the team depth chart, and I use my youth development. So Francisco Gonzalez is right there with Gianelli, but much better. So we've taken Gianelli, we've demoted him. Uh, we've added him, Gonzalez into our registration squad. Uh, Jacobo Navarro uh, is in there, Everton as well. On the left side, uh, Kovac, Fernandez, and then Azevedo in the central, in the center back position. Uh, we do have Garay. Uh, and then Galati on the right, and then we do have the other guy, Shepers. And I think he's pretty good. I do want to play him. He's had one start in in a league match and played a 6-9, so I think he's fine. Same cast of characters in the central mid, Enrique Santin Martinez. Uh, we do have, uh, you know, a couple of guys out on loan. Adria I could have brought back, but honestly, I was already at 25 people in our registration squad. Ibanez on the right side, Garcia, Santin, Lu, uh, Lu Vavadio out there. I'd really like Lu Vavadio to start there, and that leaves Ibanez switching over to the left, put, putting Mecca on the bench, which he's not going to be happy about. Seven goals, eight assists, but Ibanez has 12 goals, four assists. He's playing well. And Lou Vavadio, of course, we talked about four goals, five assists in six matches. So that's a heck of a trio right there. Uh, we do have Gonzalez up top. Uh, Ibanez can slot in there. Lou Vavadio can come up. Garcia can play up there. Enrique will never play up there. And Illa Marindi is our guy there. Wanted to look at his form with you here real quick. He's just come back. I mean, you can see the injuries. He came back, got hurt again and then was out for a while. A 6'6", six, six, a 7'3", a 6'4". So, you know, he's only got the one assist, no goals. I wonder if I should have a discussion with him. There has to be something about, yeah, better form, better form. That would be great. All right, well, let's get to the match for today. Man City first leg, Champions League knockout stages. If I'm being honest with you, I think we're done here. I really, really think we're done here. But we're going to give it a run. All right, Navarro. I should probably bring him off. Let's bring Garay on that side. We'll bring Galati on that side. And Martinez. Uh, Martinez is a little tired, but you know what? He can rest next match. All right, we're going to go with Francisco in goal. Garay, Fernandez, Kovac, and Galati. Martinez and Enrique in the mid, Ibanez and Luvavadio 
on the wings, Gonzalez and Illamarindi up top. We are having some fitness issues with a couple of those players uh, coming back from injury. So let's go out and get it done. And we have some possible movement issue to talk about after the match. So if you don't sit through the whole match and you just want to see that, you know, go ahead and forward up to the end of the video. Oh, Carpas, good save by Francisco. He tried to go top shelf. That is good. Let's go ahead and encourage the team here. Not a lot happening, which is actually pretty good. A little teaser for what, what I'm contemplating is uh, we've talked about a particular league that we were very interested in going to and have never seen any real jobs come open there. And we just had a look about a week ago, and uh, three jobs were open. Two of them I was actually interested in. Oh, there's a shot that goes high. All right. Let's encourage him again. All right, Garai with the throw. There's a cross in. And Diogo is on the counter. Look, Kobach slid over. Why would you do that? Why would you come off of your man? Uh, you, had your, you had your left back, your left center, sitting right there. And you both dropped in on the same player. And that was Kovac's fault. And he's supposed to be our big guy. Oh, my God. <laughs> Saw my keeper come flying out of the box. And that one goes wide of the mark. Francisco just all over the place. All right. Another opportunity for Garay. All right, Gonzalez taken down in the box. No penalty. Oh, he is he is asking where the call is. And we get no joy from the referee, the official. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Kovac. Yeah. And Carpas beats Francisco at the near post. All right, I need to jump in on this tactic and let's see what. I've made him a no-nonsense center back. All right, central defender. All right, Kovac is killing me, man. I don't know what to do with him. Oh, that one had a real bend on it. A lot of English. We're going to have to demand more here. Back post goes high. Like I said, I'm not expecting to get out of this stage, but I would like to be competitive, and I would like not to give up really shit goals. <laughs> that would be really positive on my part. All right, we've got a three-on-three. Three. Ibanez is through. Oh, my God, it got deflected off of Gonzalez, and we don't even get a shot. We've got to do better than that. All right, Enrique over the top. It's Illamarindi. It bounces off of the keeper, and Gonzalez puts in his 17th. So that was lucky. Illamarindi with a good attempt. Oh, and the Levante fans go crazy as we equalize one to one just minutes before halftime. Can we get into the half on even footing? Or better yet, could we make a play here and steal a goal? That would be awesome. But I'd rather go in equal than concede here. Okay. Liking that. Not liking that. A lot of inconsistencies here. Just, uh, you know, but we're playing one of the top teams in all of, all of Europe, in all the world. Oh. And that was what we did not want to happen. They score in stoppage time with about 15 seconds left in the half. Oh, that's horrible. Let's give them the motivation speech. <laughs> oh, my God. Kovac, I don't know what his deal is, man. 
And he's playing a seven, and I think he's looked like shit. That's that's uh, confusing. All right, Enrique's on a six three. Luba Vadio's on a six three as well. I'm gonna go ahead and make some early subs here. Enrique, we're gonna bring on Santine. That's our midfield change. I'll be Fernandez. How is he only playing a six two? I haven't seen him do anything wrong. Uh, you know what? Hold on, I'm gonna have to cancel that. Martinez is tired. I'm going to have to bring Santine on for him. I don't think I'm going to have a choice. Luva Vadio, let's switch him with Ibanez. And then we can bring Mecca on for him. That'll be our two subs for now. Luva Vadio, new to the club. Let's, let's bring on Mecca, who's been, been our stalwart out there for most of the season. I, I don't have another midfielder. We only have three central mids. So, you know, we're going to have to make do with that. Let's demand more. We're going to raise it up to attacking. And hold on. Pause. What did I do? I must have hit that by mistake, huh? Let's cancel that. Yeah, I was trying to do this, and it hit the tactics. I don't know what that was all about. All right, let's, uh, Ibanez for Garcia. Let's do that. Get some more fresh legs up top. All right, Mecca's in. Crossed. Headed clear. Ah, we don't even, get, again, we don't even get an effort. Tackled away by Garay, and it goes right to a Man City player. And that, Teleported right through Francisco. Cuyade, 24th goal of the season. I really don't want to watch that because I think it went right through my keeper. And I could have been happy with a one goal loss, possibly. A two goal, I'm not going to be happy with. I'm going to tell him to shoot on sight. Look at that. Kovac. Oh, and the keeper got dinked. Kuyade again. But I mean, look at that. The defender tackled it, but it went right into the path of the Man City player. That's horrible. I mean, he, Jesus. Ah. Uh. Utter, utter shit. I could quote my favorite football manager YouTuber and go, shitty tits! And you guys know who I'm talking about. And Enrique just stomped on Carpas, and that's going to be a sending off, so that's going to leave us with just two midfielders for the next match against Man City. All right, let's drop Ilmarindi to a number 10. And we are going to switch him to a deep liar on defend. I don't think it helps us any. Jesus. I don't know. That might be Enrique's first red card of, of the season. I don't recall him getting sent off before. We just didn't create here. Nothing at all. I don't think we deserve to give up four goals. Uh, I am going to thrash the arms. Far from pleased. They're motivated. Enrique plays a 5-7. Oh, boy. Uh, we are sitting second in the table. We are four points ahead of Barcelona. So we are doing well to return to Champions League. All right. Let's talk about... All European, so, yep. Ascending off, it's two weeks' wages. Whatever. All right, so let's talk about the save and then some things happening. So I, I asked a question a couple of weeks ago on my Twitter account, which if you're not following me there, uh, please do. Link's in the description. But... Um, you know, I don't have a large following. We've talked about this before. So when, when there's a drop in viewership, 
it's a significant percentage drop. I've never done this for the money. I'm really not doing it for the money. I would just like more exposure. But what I've noticed is our Play the Kids save has been consistently in that 10 to 12, 14 views uh, just about every episode. This series, since I came, was in the same range, but when I came to Spain, viewership has really dropped uh, down to a, you know four to six views per episode uh, when we were double digits. So almost a 50% drop in viewership. So nobody really ever answered me before. I'm wondering if the Spanish First Division, even though it's one of the big five leagues in the world, um, it's just not of interest to the vast majority of football manager viewers. And so I've kind of taken that to heart. And, you know, then the other thing is, one of the things I wanted to do coming to Spain, I actually wanted a job in France in Ligue 1, but there was nothing available. I mean, literally, even the clubs getting relegated weren't firing their coaches. So... I, uh, I I peeked into the staff the other day, went to the job center, and there were three jobs open in France. Now, you have to keep in mind, this is a Bielsa journeyman. I'm a Leeds fan. If you've watched, if you haven't watched, I highly recommend to watch the Take Us Home uh, ep- series on Amazon Prime. Very, very good series uh, on Leeds United for the first season under Bielsa and then the promotion season last year. Uh, Very, very good, and I'm hoping they have one for this year as well. But one of the things in in series, the first season, they were interviewing one of Bielsa's friends from Argentina, and he says that one of the things that Bielsa looks at, he has to fall in love with the city. With that philosophy in mind, and again, I try to process this save as... Bielsa might, based on what I've heard or read about how he makes his decisions. So his friends came out and said he has to fall in love with the city first. Then he has to be intrigued by the challenge of the club or the job that he's looking at. And if it doesn't have both things, he's not interested. So we've got a a, a little problem. Right at right in the transfer window, I went on vacation for a week because we had a 21 day break. And, you know, I'll usually vacation for seven days at a time and then I'll come back and answer emails. And that's always the point that the board uh, feels like they're going to slide in and give me a contract offer. So we've, in absenteeism, signed a five year contract extension. Uh, I really wish that was something that would be changed. Any important emails like that should kick you out of vacation and force you to make a response. I mean, transfers do that. You know, they don't come out of vacation, but they delay the decision. So I don't know why they can't code that away from being an automatic renewal. And I've never seen it not accepted. One of the the job that really got my attention. Well, here's the three jobs. AS Monaco. They've been a solid League One team. They've won League Un eight times. That immediately takes me out. Monaco's one of the bigger cities. Not interested. Then we looked at Nimes. Now, Nimes is a smaller city on the Mediterranean. And I'm I'm a I'm an architecture junkie. I would lose my shit if I ever went to visit. I've been to Spain, a um, couple of areas of Spain. But it was a work assignment. I didn't get to do a lot of sightseeing, but I just wandered around in a daze around the city. Only average training, not great. Continental, finances are okay. They've been into League Two a couple of times. They've never won League Un. So I at least looked at it. I went on the website, looked at the wiki, looked at you know images of the city, the surrounding area. Okay, you know, that's interesting. And I would, you know, I said, okay, that's, you know, I could see that, you know, I could see that. Uh, Les Crocodiles, the Crocodiles. I like the name, though. That definitely is uh, Louisiana, where I'm from. The club that got my attention, though, was Grenoble, 
oh my god the only thing i knew about grenoble I, is that's where andre the giant came from wrestling knowledge beautiful oh my god i immediately took a screenshot sent it to my wife and said do you want to move <laughs> and i got a bug-eyed response from her which is like I'm highly tempted, but that would be less than mature and adult right now <laughs> or ever. Now, they've been always been a League One side, but they've never won the league. Their best finishes have been second twice. And most of the time, they're, you know, upper, upper mid table. So good training worldwide, only okay finances. I said, you know what? I could be intrigued by this job. They did sack their last manager after a year. That's interesting. Because we don't usually see sackings, right? Not, not in, you know, we've been looking for a job here now for two seasons. So the fact that he got fired, uh, pretty good coach too. Uh, but I think we could do something with this club. So I have applied for it. The five-year contract, my board said they feel that the buyout is unattainable for Grenoble. So that's something to be looking at. I did want to look real quick with you. So their value is 93.81, and we're 330. So much smaller club monetarily-wise. I really want to go to Ligoon. At least to give it a try. I have the other part that you guys don't seem to be interested in Spain because the viewership is down from Germany, down from England. And it could be, I, I've just, you know, be, being a niche uh, YouTuber, that I just need to go all England all the time. Maybe that's what I've got to do. And that's something I, I am considering for FM22. That seems to be where most football manager views come from. And, uh, you know, I, I've always been really happy to try to be, you know, on the fringe. But again, if, if the viewership, if you guys are basically telling me not interested in the save and it's only during this one club or one, one, uh, one league, I've got to listen to that. So what I'm going to do I'm waiting to see. Now, what got me was the fans said that I wouldn't be their first choice. And then it listed my, oh, right here. Look at this. A Grenoble supporter admitted that he wouldn't be their first choice, but he could be suitable. They were quick to add that a deal being finalized in the immediate future were unlikely. Nine years of experience. Let's see. During his tenure, they won the Skybet Championship, the English Premier League, the FA Cup, the Euro Cup. Plenty of plaudits for his tactical approach at Levante. I don't know what else you want. Uh, <laughs> so uh, anyway, the only other thing that could be an issue is I am only, well, I'm four-star reputation. I've won 62% of my games. I mean, that's not below average. Grenoble's four and a half star. That could be the one thing that kicks me out. So what I'm contemplating is coming back. Now, this is how many weeks out? This is about three weeks out. Coming back for Barcelona and Man City. See if I get the interview. Here we go. Hold on. They rejected us. This is a Bielsa moment. This is a Bielsa moment. This could be my out. This could be my out. I hate to leave in the middle of the Champions League, but realistically, we just got drubbed 4-1 to one at home. We're not going to beat Man City. I mean, Man City are second in the Premier League. They're just better than us. Club vision. Develop the best youth system in the country. Now, I have an A+. Plus. They're questioning me on my loans, which was to save some money. I couldn't get anybody to pay his whole salary. Yes, that was bad, but we, start, we had our starting 10 in the game. Didn't they tell me the Spanish Cup was not important? We did see that, right? Spanish Cup, not, oh, reached the fourth round. Yeah, okay. 
Um, but now they've turned down the bo- the use system, but they want us to have the best use system system in the country. And that's an ongoing thing. Now, they're pleased with it, but they aren't putting their money where their mouth is to make them better. Let me go stew on this for a while. You guys hit the like button, subscribe for daily football manager content, and we will see you next episode.